In this video, we're going to look at how a multimeter works. And a multimeter has the ability to measure current or voltage, and so it's going to be highly useful for the electrochemistry experiment. Let's look at the device itself first. At the top, you have a display, and this is going to give you measurements of either current or voltage in our case, although the device also has the ability to measure resistance. And then below that, you have this large dial area, and this sets what's being measured by the device. Going to come back to this in a second. When you first open the device and turn it on, where you should focus your attention is down in the bottom right, where we have three ports where the leads plug in. There's a little circuit diagram at the bottom of this that helps you understand what's going on at each lead. So, for example, at the very bottom, we have a black cord plugged in, and this is labeled COM or COMMON. This black lead is connected to what's called ground, and this is defined as zero volts. The black lead should always be plugged in at the COM port. Basically, it's never going to move no matter what you're measuring. And so we call this either the common lead or the negative lead. We have the red lead plugged into the middle port. And here you can see that this is connected to a positive voltage, and we use this port to measure voltage. If we needed to measure as much as 10 amps of direct current or DC current, we could plug in the red lead to the top port. That won't be relevant for us here, though, and so we're going to keep the red lead plugged in to the middle port so that we can measure voltage. And so the red is the positive lead, and the black the negative or common lead when they're plugged in in this configuration. And this is the configuration you should use in the lab. Now, as I mentioned before, this dial above sets what we're measuring. and We can measure DC voltage, DC current, alternating voltage, or resistance using this device. Where we're going to focus our attention are on the DC voltage and DC current settings. So, for example, when the dial is within this region, we're measuring DC voltage on the display above. And the specific numbers show you the maximum voltage that can be measured on that setting. So, for example, here we have it set to 20 volts DC. That means that this has a maximum of 20 volts that it can display up here, and the units shown are volts. If I kick it down to 2000M, what you should notice is that the decimal point disappeared, and now we're just looking at three zeros. And the little M here indicates that now we're not showing volts up here, but we're showing millivolts. So the numbers up here will be much larger than the previous setting, just because we've kicked it down to millivolts instead of volts being measured here. Same idea applies on the DC current side. The A represents current, since the units of current are amperes, or A for short. And we have settings of 200 micro, that's microamps. We have M for milliamps, and there is a 10 amp setting, which is separate because this is actually a really large current value. Um, so for our purposes, we're, and in this video, we're just going to focus on the DC voltage region. I wanted to show an example initially just looking at a 9 volt battery. So here I have a 9 volt battery, and the battery, like any galvanic cell, has two half cells within it, one the cathode and one the anode. On a battery, these are represented using positive and negative symbols. So the cathode is represented by a plus sign here. This is the cathode or positive terminal of the battery, and it's the smaller port on top. The larger port on top is the negative terminal or the anode. To observe a positive voltage here on the multimeter, we want to make sure to connect the leads in the proper configuration. What we want to do is connect the positive lead of the multimeter to the cathode or positive terminal of the battery and the negative or common lead of the multimeter to the negative terminal of the battery. When we do that, as you can see, we're observing a positive voltage. So there we have it. I've got the negative terminal connected to the negative lead of the multimeter, positive terminal connected to the positive lead of the multimeter, and we're observing a positive voltage. In the language of galvanic cells, red goes to the cathode and black to the anode in order to observe a positive voltage. And of course, if I simply switch the leads, if I got the leads backwards for some reason, I would just observe that same magnitude of voltage, just a negative number, right? So if I switch the leads here quickly, now I'm observing negative 9.35, 9.36 volts. And knowing that this is a battery that I'm holding in my hand, right, I could simply uh, just reverse the sign or eliminate the sign and realize that this is something that generates voltage. And so I want to express this as a positive number. So simply throw away the negative sign and report that number as the voltage of this battery, right? Let's look at using a multimeter in a galvanic cell context now. So here I have set up a makeshift galvanic cell with a zinc 
zinc 2 plus half cell on the left, a copper, copper 2 plus half cell on the right, and a central reservoir of potassium nitrate. And this solution in the middle, along with these two pieces of filter paper, acts essentially like a salt bridge. So ions can move to one side or the other to ensure charge balance across this galvanic cell. To each piece of metal, I've connected two alligator clips, and these run to this central thing that looks like the battery ports that we just saw on the 9-volt battery. So on the left, this port is connected to this electrode. That's important. The black cord goes to the zinc half cell, while the red cord goes to the copper half cell. The colors aren't that important. It's just important to correlate this terminal with this electrode and this left-hand terminal with the left-hand electrode here. Now, just as we did in measuring the battery, we need to make sure in measuring this galvanic cell to observe a positive cell voltage that we connect the positive lead or the red lead of the multimeter to the cathode of this galvanic cell and the black lead or the common or negative lead to the anode of this galvanic cell. So that raises the question, how do we know what the cathode and the anode are, right? Well, if we think about the standard potential across this cell, and it is a standard cell, by the way, one molar copper two and one molar zinc two in these two solutions, we'll realize that the anode is zinc. Oxidation is occurring at the zinc electrode since the standard reduction potential of zinc is negative and the standard reduction potential of copper is much more positive and in fact is, is greater than zero. So oxidation is happening over here, reduction over here, this is the anode and this is the cathode of the galvanic cell. In terms of the direction of electron flow, that means electrons are flowing from left to right. So from the zinc half cell through the black cord, through these two guys, and once we connect them via the multimeter through the black lead of the multimeter, through the internals of the multimeter, and out the red lead, and then down the red cord and onto the copper metal. So think about the direction of electron flow here from left to right. When we connect the multimeter leads to observe a positive voltage, we need to connect the positive lead to the cathode. And so I've been strategic with the colors, but realize that the reason we're putting the red lead over here on the right is so that the red lead is connected to the cathode of the galvanic cell. The positive lead, note where it's plugged in, is connected to the cathode. The negative or common lead needs to be connected to the anode to observe a positive cell voltage. And sure enough, when we connect the multimeter leads in this way, we observe a positive cell voltage. All that said, if you observe a negative cell voltage, you can also realize that galvanic cells always have positive voltages. And so if you get a negative number, just throw away the negative sign as the magnitude of the voltage will be the same no matter which way the leads are connected. 